you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to be cutting along with you the newest bag. Um, well, I guess it might not be new depending when you're watching this. It was launched in January of end of January, beginning of February 2023. It is the Becky bag by Toby Stylix. Um, this is the cutting video for that. Uh, cutting videos are a brand new thing. I have started as of February 2023 so I really do hope you like them um, unlike my tutorials they are done in real time as we go live no voiceover just me talking you through how to cut out this bag so let me tell you the things I am going to be using in this bag so my exterior fabric I am going with the amethyst purple uh, galaxy customs pearl vinyl um, for the exterior of this bag my lining i grabbed this out of my stash because i think my purples match pretty nicely um this is called let's see if i can see um does it even say i know i got it from fabricland there is absolutely no name on the salvages for this so i don't know what it is um i'm going to be using a zipper by the yard from a blue cala Hardware from uh, M-Line Bags, zipper pulls from Blue Cala. And one extra thing in this that we normally don't use in a lot of bags is cording to make the rounded handles. I find, I just got this from um, Canadian Tire. You can get it from Home Depot, Canadian Tire, probably Walmart, anywhere. It's quarter inch, just poly whatever rope that you would use camping or whatever. This is amazing in rolled handles. and. We won't be cutting this today. I just really want to show you what I will be using for that cording because I know sometimes it's like, oh my goodness, what can I get for that cording? It doesn't have to be a hard thing. Just go out and buy this rope. When we get to the tutorial, which will be the next video, you will see how this comes into play there. Trust me, go and buy it. It's amazing. Um, for the interfacings, I will be uh, backing my lining pieces with EB Fuse Light, which is a medium woven interfacing from M Line Bag, similar to an SF 101 or a woven fuse or what have you. Um, I will be using Decoville Heavy in the bottom of the bag. I, I will not be cutting interfacing with you in this video, mainly because we all use different interfacings as we go and we have different ways of fusing it or applying it. So I'm just going to explain to you the interfacings I am going to use that are different from the pattern. Um, but they are equivalent to the pattern. So I will be using Decoville Heavy in the bottom, main bottom piece. I'll be using Decoville Heavy in the handle panel interfacing. So you'll see the little round ones. Um, the main panels call for Decoville Heavy as well. I'm not gonna use Decoville Heavy for those. Here in Canada, Decoville Heavy is a very, very, very expensive to come by. I am going to use EB Fuse Heavy, which is from Emma Line Bag. It is the equivalent of a Duckable light, but I love it so much more mainly because it's woven and it fuses like a hot. Mm, it's I can't say that word, it's a bad word. <laughs> it's amazing. So, two layers of it I find on a heavy vinyl like I'm using works equivalent to a decable heavy. I am using the decable heavy on the bottom of the bag mainly because we're putting those purse feet in there and it's a lot thicker than say the two layers of the EB Fuse Heavy. Um, so I need something to grab onto those purse feet prongs. So that's why I'm using that. Um, and same within the little handle uh, interfacing pieces, mainly because it's a little thicker and I am going to be adding rivets in there. That is optional, but I'll be adding rivets in there just to give those handles a little extra stability. Um, so yes, my Decable Heavy and my main panel pieces, I am gonna use the two layers of EB Fuse Heavy. And then on the side panels, it calls for, I'm just, I'm just looking down at my pieces here. On the side panels, it calls for a deck of a light. I will be using a one layer of EB Fuse Heavy again from Emma Line Bags, which is equivalent to a deck of a light. I actually prefer it over deck of a light. It's just, it, it doesn't wrinkle, nothing. It is amazing. Um, what else? This calls for minimal hardware, minimal fabric, even minimal interfacing. I'm so excited to finally have had a chance to get around to making this tutorial. So let me get everything situated and then we will get to cutting the lining panels. 
Okay, so let's get started. So one little trick I want to share with you guys is um, when it comes to marking off the pieces that you are doing, you don't want to necessarily keep printing off your cutting list or what have you. So what I do is I I print off my cutting list and then I use my Soline Air Erasing Pen and I go through as I've done things and I cross things off. And what's great about an air erasing um, pen is by the time you go to do this project again, that uh, those pen marks are gone and you're fresh to go for another one. So what I'm gonna be doing first is I'm actually gonna start with the middle column and do my lining fabrics first, just because there are not very many pieces for that. So we may as well just get her out of the way. So the top of the list says your lining panel pattern piece F, which is this one right here. So we need to cut two of these on the fold. I'm gonna show you a little trick that I like to do where I can cut two of these at the exact same time. I don't think there's any right way up for this. I don't think so. Okay, so what we wanna do is from one side, we wanna fold it up make sure it is wide enough that the whole piece fits on you can see i fit on good make sure you're coming in from your salvage you don't want your salvage to be part of your pattern piece so that is one fold right there but i want to cut two so what i'm going to do make sure it's nice and even and i am actually going to fold this in half this way and create a second fold there that way i can cut both pieces at the exact same time so now i'm going to put this down around my uh, my uh, my two folds so you can see it's along the two folds I'm going to use some of my little hair clips here just to hold my pattern piece in place just along this folded edge you can go ahead and you can use actually use pattern weights on other parts of this because it is quite wide as well this is a little uh, knit bowl that I did in um, in a ceramic class yeah it wasn't my strength but it's a cute little sheep anyways but it holds my uh, pattern weights here. So make sure it's all pulled nice and taut. There's no wrinkles underneath. I can feel something under there, so I'll just smooth it out. I guess that, okay. Use a couple pattern weights. And then I'm gonna go in with my rotary cutter and I'm gonna cut both at the same time. I'm all about speed. Cutting is not my favorite thing in the whole world. I want to get right to the sewing. Cutting isn't fun for me. So to make sure we did that right, we'll just fold these out. And we'll make sure we definitely have two pieces. And there's one. And there's two. Now what I will do with these to prepare these for sewing, I will go ahead and I will press these. I like to use um, some Best Press starching spray just to spray on my cotton pieces before I fuse them onto the interfacing. So I would also go ahead and cut two medium woven interfacings the same way, fuse them to the back of these. You can go ahead and put those aside for now. Okay, go to our pattern piece here. We can cross off that we have done that. We will cross off when we've done, do you know what's really funny is it doesn't it doesn't call in the pattern for a woven interfacing if using cotton I know I have to use a woven interfacing because I am on a uh, industrial machine if I don't my machine is going to completely chew that up so I would say if you are on an industrial machine make sure you are backing these lining pieces with medium woven interfacing if you're on a domestic you're lucky you get to skip that step so <laughs> all right so I've cut the two lining pieces um, we do not have to cut a bottom piece for that because that is going to be a box corner bottom so that lining piece includes the bottom now we need two zipper pocket pieces for the inside <clears throat> So I'm going to go ahead and cut those as per, I'm going to do them both at the same time, as per the measurements in the pattern. So again, I'm folding it on the fold because I'm going to cut two at the exact same time. So I'm going to lay this down 
And I'm just gonna make it a little bigger on one side and a little longer than what the pattern calls for for your cutting. Again, look at your pattern piece to see what those measurements are. Okay, I'm gonna flip this around. So I've got the folded edge up there and then I'm going to just cut it the rest of the way around along that folded edge. I should have changed my rotary blade, but hey, that's okay. Too late now. So that is my two zipper pocket lining pieces. Again, if you are on an industrial, go ahead and back those with a medium woven interfacing. Um, that'll just give a little bit more, um, well, make it so your machine doesn't eat it. If even if I honestly, if I was on a domestic machine, I would back these with a medium woven interfacing as well, just because it just helps, um, helps the cotton have a longer life, I think. Okay, so that's the two a zipper pocket lining pieces done. I can cross that off. And then we have our slip pocket piece. So what I'm going to do is, again, fold it up on, in half. Uh, you're gonna cut it as per the measurement. So where this fold is, that's gonna be the longest part. An example, okay, this one I'll give the membership for. It's calling for the slip pocket to be eight inches by 11 inches. So this is where I like to adjust it to make, cause the slip pocket, I like to make sure it is going to fit my phone. So I'm actually going to do mine um, eight inches by 12 inches because I have a little bit of a larger phone. I just want a little bit of the phone peeking out of the top. So I'm gonna just give it a little extra height. And then I'm using a six inch ruler. So I can go ahead and put one edge right along the fold and then cut the rest up. I'm leaving a little long here because I'm going to trim that up in a moment um, because that's an uneven edge there. So this slip pocket piece is one piece. What I love about Toby's um, patterns is she does her linings exactly like I do my linings in all the bags um, with a zipper overlay and a um, an accent on the slip pocket pieces. It is one of my most favorite ways of um, doing my lining pockets. I do all of my lining pockets the same way so I don't have to deviate from the pattern at all because she does it the exact same way I do. So again slip pocket piece sometimes um, I actually like to show my slip pocket pieces. I will go in with an EB Fuse Medium, which is equivalent in weight to say a um, a, pe a Pelton, uh, pel Pelton, Pelton 809, but it's woven. So it has a much nicer feel to it and it's woven and it doesn't wrinkle. So my slip pocket pieces, I like to use EB Fuse Medium from MLI Bags. Um, SF101 or EB Fuse Lite works as well. That is just a preference for me that I thought I would like to share with you guys. So that's the slip pocket piece done. We can cross that off. That's it for lining pieces. Let me clean all of this up and then we will get started with our exterior vinyls. Okay, so my vinyls, I cut a little bit different than my lining pieces. I like to draw all my pieces out on the back side of the vinyl, mainly because vinyl is expensive and um, it is our precious, we know that, especially when it's a pearl vinyl. The pearls are my favorite. So I'm gonna draw them out because if for some reason the configuration of when I, how I'm putting them on um, causes too much waste of the vinyl or doesn't leave enough room for some of the shapes, I can always go and adjust and redraw them to make it so they all fit. Because there's nothing worse than going and cutting and then being like, oh, now I have an odd shape last piece and I can't get the last of it in here. Okay, so I got my handy dandy cutting chart here. We need to cut two exterior main panels. Um, where are you? Which are these ones here. Now these pearl vinyls are 12 inch wide by 54, I believe it is. So they are perfect for this bag. A 12 inch roll of vinyl, any vinyl would be perfect for this bag because it's not a super tall one. So. I know most vinyls come in 18 inch and sometimes it's hard to find those projects for a 12 inch roll. This one is optimal for a 12 inch roll. So what I'm going to do here is turn my phone off. So I have it, this was going to be one that's on a fold. So I have it right side up and I have my pattern P or my vinyl right side down. So they're wrong sides together. 
and I have my pen and I'm going to go ahead and just trace this pattern piece. And where I get to where we're going to be on the fold, I just do one little line like so and another one down here. And then I can go ahead when I flip the pattern piece over to draw the other side, I can line up those lines nice and straight and then continue drawing the rest of the shape. And we're going to do want to repeat that exact same thing once more. So go right here, do the same thing. Make my little line at the half mark, clip, and draw the other side. And then I like to just write on the back here, mean, mean, like so. So that is the main panels done. And I will cross. Hmm, I'm over. not sure. Oh my goodness, Alexa. <laughs> there we go. That's what happens when you're recording live. You get Coco in the background. You can hear her there. And then my Alexa has gone rogue. Okay, so the next thing on the list. Let me see, which way do I want to do this? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way. Let me see. Nope, that doesn't quite fit there. Okay, next I'm actually going to do the side panels. We're going to skip over the design panels right now and we are going to do the side panels. And I'm actually going to put them this way, I think. Again, if you're using something that's directional, make sure you keep that in mind. Now, the reason I'm going sideways like so is I'm gonna put the second one up here because we need two of these. And I'm just trying to use up as much of the space as I possibly can. I do not like wasting a mino, that's for sure. Then I can just line up this line here. So that'll be a nice, easy cut one cut for two pieces. Okay, so side, side, we can mark off that. Okay, next I'm going to do my base piece here larger ruler so as per the measurements on the pattern draw that out um, I'm actually gonna go across this way I may have to pull out another roll of this vinyl so a 12 inch roll you may need to have two rolls of it on here um, <clears throat> but we'll see how far we get first Double check that your measurements are right and go ahead and draw that out. Again, measurements are all in the pattern. So this is my base. So as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of mapping in my mind where I'm putting everything. Okay, another thing I am not cutting out in this video is the butterfly panel because I'm not going to include the butterfly panel in my bag. I will include it in the video though. Um, I'm actually just going to take an excerpt of the butterfly panel um, for the tutorial from my Zaya bag tutorial where we made that butterfly. But I'm making my accents a really, really beautiful zipper pull that I have. It's a nice and big heart and I'm not going to be doing the butterfly. So keep in mind that you would also have to cut out your two butterfly pieces, your butterfly binder and your butterfly dangly thing if you're going to be doing that. But I'm not cutting those out in this video. Okay. 
Next, we are going to, okay, so this I am deviating from the pattern a little bit. In the pattern, it says to cut um, four exteriors, not cutting with this pattern piece just yet. I am going to draw out two of the pattern pieces. And then I'm going to draw two of the rectangle sizes that the pattern calls for to do in the four. So I'm doing two pattern pieces and then the two um, rectangles measurements that it calls for. Because I'm going to not be gluing my pieces, I'm going to be showing you a different way in the tutorial of doing those um, design panels. So it's just slightly different than the pattern. Um, it just is a way that I find the way I will be showing you in the tutorial on doing these to get a nice even edge if you are edge coating, which I will be edge coating for sure because I edge coat all of my raw edges. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw out two of these. So just following the shape at the half fold mark, again those little lines this you want to take your time to draw out nicely and it will be kind of fussy to cut but trust me the effort is worth it especially if you're edge painting like I will be just trust my madness here and you will understand why I'm doing it the way I am once we get into the tutorial if you've watched any of my other videos and I've done raw edge connectors we're doing a very very similar process as that I'll flip it over and do one on the other side. Now this pattern also comes with SVG files if you do have a Cricut Maker. I do have one, but um, I find it by the time I get it all set up, it's just easier for me to draw it out myself. So you can definitely use the Cricut Maker to cut these pieces with those SVG files as well. Okay, so now I'm going to draw a second one of these. So again, two of these and then the two 12 by four rectangular pieces the pattern calls for. So again, the pattern calls for not cutting this out right away, but for cutting those four 12 by four pieces. But the way I'm doing it, we need to cut out two right now. And I'm definitely going to have to use my other roll. So an 18 inch roll probably would have done everything. 12 inch roll, not quite but it's still a great project for 12 inch rolls because of the height and the width of this bag. They fit on here perfectly. There's one. Curious to know if anybody else draws their pieces out like this. I love mapping my pieces out. I really, really do. Okay, so those two of those pattern pieces. So once again, it calls for cutting two, what was it? Two 12 by four rectangles. So I'm going to, they're not all gonna fit on this piece, obviously. So I'm gonna draw those out. make sure that does definitely fit because what we're going to be doing is once we cut out these pieces we're going to stick them right sides together with this and then we're actually going to go ahead and top stitch you'll see what I'm doing when we get there so I don't think I have another 12 by 4 space on this no so I'm gonna to have to remember when I pull out my other roll I have to do another PC rectangle so um, 
Yeah, I don't have enough pieces for that right now. Okay, so while I'm here, let me grab it. Um, the pattern has a paper template for your zipper pocket overlay. I am going to use an acrylic one that I have. This one is from sewyours.com. I do know I need my zipper opening to be six inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this to draw it out. Um, so I just love these acrylic templates. I truly do. You could also use your rotary cutter on that. On my one that's more square, I do because um, it's easy to do those edges, but the rounded ones, I like to go in by hand. So this is where my zipper is going to be there and one, two, three, four, five, six, and right there. So my acrylic template is a little bit bigger. So I've drawn a line at that six inch zipper opening mark, and then I'm just going to move my template down, line up that little zipper mark line I made and continue with my shape. So that'll fill that space in nicely. And then you can go ahead and draw those lines. Okay, so there is my zipper overlay. Again, there's a paper template in the pattern you can use as well. So I have my zipper overlay. I have almost my design pals. I gotta cut one more. So I'm just gonna make mark there that I gotta do one more so I don't forget. I'm not doing the butterfly panel. Again, you just trace out those pieces and do them. I will have instruction in the tutorial on how to make it still. It'll just be with different fabrics. Okay, and then my slip pocket trim, again, she has that in the, um, she's got a paper template for that as well. I am a ruler girl. I prefer to use my ruler um, for any of my square pieces and save that paper if I can. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out mine. Now I like my overlays to be one and a half inches. Hers is a little bit narrower than that. I'll just do it right here. Mm -hmm. That'll work for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to put it right there. So I'm doing my slightly different measurements than hers. I'm doing my nine inches by one and a half inches. Okay. Whoops. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just like to have a little bit more hang over. Hers is a little bit narrower this way, which is fine too. This is just my preference. And while I'm here, I'm also gonna go ahead and do a middle dotted line. And if you watched any of my Bag Makers 101 classes on how I do this, you know why I do that as well. That is gonna be the fold line when we fold it in half. Okay, so you can see we have used up the majority of this vinyl. We don't have we only have that one designer panel rectangle to cut out still and our two handle panels. So I'm going to see if I can get a handle panel, handle panel, say that 10 times fast. I think I can only get one, but we will see. So this is another one that is on the fold. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it. I'm excited to do these handles. Okay, and just like we did with the other pieces, when you come to that fold mark, do your little notches at the half. Not little notches, just your little little lines. You don't have to draw all the way down. I find if I draw all the way down, I think I'm gonna cut through that when I go to cut this out. Okay, flip it over. And draw the other half. Trace it all the way around and across the bottom. Okay, am I going to be, and I'm not going to be lucky. So I am going to have to pull out another piece, but look from drawing it out, we have a very, very little vinyl waste there. So I'm going to go grab another purple. We will finish drawing that out and then we will cut these out.
Okay, so I'm happy to say that in my scrapbook, I had some leftover amethyst, so I'm going to be using up some scrap, which is great. Okay, so this scrap piece, let's see, let's see, I bet I can get that handle piece out of it. Now, of course, I'm going to have to give this a little bit of a press later, but I'm going to just hand press it right now. Put down my piece and go ahead and draw out this one as well. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to hit the camera there. So I have a whole bin of just scrap vinyls. I usually pull them out before I pull out a full roll, but this one was just hiding in there, which is really good because I did not have another roll of this. I was almost panicking. Now this one, I didn't go all the way to the edge because I don't have a super straight line there. So I'm drawing the whole thing out at that half mark down the other side. And where that fold is, match up those lines. So yay, using up some scrap too. This is great. Okay, so that hand, I don't think I'm going to get anything else out of that one. And then I'm going to draw that, what was it, 12 by 4 piece? This isn't quite 12 inches because I have cut it down. Was it 12 by 4? 12 by 4. And you know what? I'm actually going to cheat because this is just straight lines. <laughs> I'm going to cut this one right off the hop. <laughs> All right, so we still have a little scrap there. And then you can go in and you can cut it with scissors or you can cut it with rotary cutters. I'm a rotary girl myself. So I'm just gonna go in and cut up all my pieces. Be oh, oh, that one was close. It's okay. Now, I made them, I slipped here and I went in a little bit, but I'm okay with that because I know that these edges are going to be folding in and it's not going to be a big deal. So, I've learned my lesson there. And those little curvy pieces, I'm actually going to go in with my scissors. <laughs> because they're so tight. But I caught it before it went too far, so it's still usable. Oops. Come on. I'm not one that likes using scissors, mainly because I have really bad carpal tunnel and the scissors really, really affect it badly. Okay. One handle piece. The rest of that can go in the garbage. Okay. And now I'm just gonna go through and cut all of these out. Those two pieces are going to go together once I get the rest of that cut out. Now keep in mind your these pieces here and here will be raw edge so they have to be a non-fraying fabric. Your zipper overlay and your slip pocket decorative accent have raw edges, so they have to be a non-fraying fabric. And on our handles, these little sections right here are gonna be raw edge. The rest isn't, but there 
yeah because these are going to end up being folded in and like so if that gives you an idea for the rounded handle so these edges here are going to be raw but our handle edges are not going to be raw let's just make sure that this is definitely going to be okay I'm going to have to redraw and recut this. I did cut it in too far, but I will do that off camera. You guys don't need to watch me redo that one. Okay. So as you can see, this video isn't that long. And this isn't taking very long to cut out at all. It's very minimal pieces. Okay, so there's my overlay piece. I'll put that with my other pieces. I tell you, if the pattern is fast to cut, it has my heart. Okay, now for this base piece, I would be cutting out the deckable heavy piece as per the pattern. And on the wrong side of it, outside of the seam allowance, I would be fusing my deckable heavy piece onto that. Okay, so that's what you would do. Cut it as per the pattern and put the deckable heavy on the back there. Now these you do want to cut nice and accurately because they are going to be our templates for how we cut this overlay piece. So I'm going to do the long curvy parts with my rotary cutter and these little round parts I'm going to go in with my scissors as much as I hate doing that but I'm going to because they have to be pretty straight edges rotary cutters are great but these accents are what make this bag so these little round parts in here you want them to be as pretty as they can be. Again, I believe she said she had SVG files for these, so if you have a cutting machine, you can have it do the work for you. I have a Cricut, a Cricut Maker, and the only time I really pull it out is when I'm doing wallets, like the Cork Pocket Pal or the Tall Wallet or any of the Sonar patterns. So I mainly use it to cut my cork. Okay, I'm gonna go into this one too and do this little corner. go okay I can go back in with my rotary cutter many ask have you cut your fingers with your rotary cutter sure have so be careful I couldn't sew for a while when I did that <laughs> And I have no feeling in my finger there. There's a nice little lump there. This whole side here got cut off. Can't tell now, but there is no feeling in it anymore. I went that far in. Okay. So that one is done. Let's do the other one. So these are really the only tedious to cut pieces. And I tell you this pearl vinyl, when it goes to edge painting this, it is such a wonderful edge to work with. It's just such a nice and um, dense piece of vinyl that it just makes edge coating nice and even and a breeze. Cutting circles is the hardest thing in the world, holy. There we go. <clears throat> Get this a little more even here. 
You can probably see my hand, see my hand shaking? That's how bad my carpal tunnel is. Oh my goodness. So I'm going very slow around these corners, not because they're hard, but mainly because my hand is shaking so bad. And I want to keep control of these scissors, even though my wrist is yelling at me. Okay, so we have those two and the two backing pieces done. I put my pattern piece with them, clip them together, and set them aside too. Next, push all the garbage away. And there's my slip pocket accent. The rest is pretty easy to cut. Side pieces. Now these side pieces, I will also be going and cutting out my side panel interfacing. And you'll see how this works out. It'll be out of the seam allowance when it's nice and centered. I will be cutting mine with EB Fuse uh, Heavy, as I said. You can also use Decoville Light. So um, you'll also wanna cut out those pieces and fuse them outside of the seam allowances of these pieces. I will not be doing that in this video, so. Interfacing is too hard to show on here too because my iron is against that wall. I just can't film very well at it. So, okay, so put those aside. And my main panels. And once again, my main panels, you can see the main panel interfacing. Once it's fit in here, will be outside of the seam allowances. And I'm gonna use two layers of EB Fuse Heavy. Um, or you can use one layer of Decoville Heavy or Peltex or something similar. I know all over the world we all have different types of interfacings. So whatever a heavy stabilizer is for you is what you will use. Okay, so that's one. And it's very minimal interfacing to cut out for this. It's amazing. Now, when I do do my interfacing, I do like to fuse them. I will be fusing them after this video because I like to leave them overnight, especially when I'm working um, with a fusible interfacing. So yeah, where did my, there it is. So once again, you will also have had your butterfly pieces if you're doing that. Again, I'm not doing that. And then, and look at that from that roll that is all the waste there was that's that's pretty darn good i have to do everything in my power not to save this little piece but i think and this one here because i'm going to recut it i will save those pieces because they can very easily be a zipper overlay <laughs> these ones i'll throw away i try not to waste anything it's terrible because I learned the last time I'm going to go in with my scissors this is my first time making this bag again most of my videos I try to make it the first time I'm making a bag so if I come across anything um, that kind of throw me for a loop I can share my thought process with you on how I get over it or change it and then we can learn together okay so I will be recutting my other handle piece because I lost control of my rotary cutter but besides that and besides the little bit of interfacing we have to cut that is it let me just a few so yeah, I really do hope you enjoyed this cutting video. As you can see, it wasn't very long to cut, didn't take very long to cut this out at all. The interfacing will go so fast to cut out because it's only like one, two, three, four. Oh, 
I also forgot to mention, you'll also, these little itty bitty handle pieces, you'll be cutting with Decaval Heavy. Um, I will be using Decaval Heavy in this so my rivets have something easy to grab into. So you have to cut those out of your stabilizer as well. So yes, I do hope you liked this video and I hope you like the cutting series. I'm going to try to do them with all of my tutorials um, as a separate video released the same day. So hopefully that'll be great. You guys can hop on over to the tutorial now and you can watch how this bag all comes together. That link is down below in the description for that video as well as a link to the Meet the Bags if you want a kind of a roundabout uh, tour of the bag that we are making today. Anyways, I hope you guys really like this. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you'd like to check out or if you would like to support my channel further, you could always buy me a coffee. That is linked down below in the description as well. Also, check out my membership side where I have live classes. There could be something there that interests you. Anyways, until the next one or the tutorial for this, catch you guys later. Bye.